All right, so, <laughs> what's going, guys? So, far? Going on. so this is, as you guys know, um, we're all taking uh, documentaries for social change as a class, and we have a big PSA project coming up. All of our groups are doing a different topic. Um, our topic is going to be um, safe drinking. Safe drinking. Safe drinking. Safe drinking. Ooh. <laughs> um, and so, why do you guys want to say about talk about why we were inspired to choose this as our topic? I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take it away. Should we start with Mark? We can start with Mark. It all starts with Mark. It all starts with Mark. It all starts with Mark. Mark. Mark broke his leg. Drinking. Drinking. It, not, it's not a great sight. You want to go in detail? Uh, sure. So a buddy of ours was just drinking one night and uh, had a little too much. He was walking up the street and thought it was a good idea to do a backflip, and the backflip didn't go well, and he broke his leg. Life is hard for Mark right now. Yeah. He now walks around in a boot. Yeah. And crutches. And crutches. Very uncomfortable. Very. Very uncomfortable. And Clara lost her keys. And I lost my keys. So the moral of the story is that everyone has had a tough time and a few rough experiences while we've been drinking a few times. And, and there's one way we can solve this. Responsible drinking. Responsible drinking. If you're so. going to drink, do it in a safe way. Have someone looking after you. Mm -hmm. If you want to stay off the struggle bus, drink water intermittently and listen to our PSA. Hopefully that'll help. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Enjoy the PSA. Safe drinking coming to a screen near you. <laughs> We're here today to talk about a very serious issue. Have you ever had to deal with slow walkers in your life? Like those pedestrians as you're walking on the sidewalk as you're walking on the sidewalk, they're just like walking too slow. Someone's on their phone, trying to get to class, trying to get by them. It just seems like they don't know how to walk. <laughs> I hate slow walkers. It's the worst. <laughs> what are specific situations that you are frustrated with the most? I just, slow walk, they're just the worst. Like if there's, I don't know trying to get somewhere and they are in your way. If you're trying to talk to somebody and I don't know, they just, they're the worst. That's all I have to say about slow walkers. Kate, what about you? What's a specific situation? When I'm trying to get to class and I'm already a little late and someone's walking really slow in front of me and I have to try and get around them. I think other situations too are like, there's a big group coming towards you and they just don't leave room <laughs> on the sidewalk and you kind of just get pushed off the sidewalk into the grass or into the road. Or when you really have to go to the bathroom. Oh my gosh, there's so <laughs> many times that's right. happened to me, it's the worst. You know it's even worse than a big group, a slow walking big group. <laughs> yeah, that's true. A distracted, slow walking, big group, all on their phones. Just headphones plugged in. They can't hear you coming, especially those bikers. Like bikers coming down the side of the sidewalk. And the slow walkers are down on their phone, not paying attention. They're gonna run them right over. It's, it's like, it's public safety. This is what we're talking this about. It's a big issue. It's huge. Yeah. This people is, just aren't aware of their surroundings. Do you know how many people walk on a college campus every day? So many people. So many people. How Don't, many people? So many. <laughs> so many. Don't be one of the slow ones. So, if you want to learn some lessons about not being an annoying pedestrian, an annoying slow walker, and be respectful to your fellow pedestrians, stay tuned for our PSA. We're going to teach you some etiquette. Yeah. Thanks for watching. I'm here today to tell a really tragic tale of something that happened to me. Um, my dad had a bike, red Cannondale bike, cherry red, and it was his in the 80s, and he, roll it, he rode that bike all around Brooklyn, New York. It was like an extra appendage. He loved it, and everywhere that it went, it went, everywhere that he went, it went with him. Um, now that bike has since been passed through my family, to my older brother, to my twin sister, then it was passed to me here in Burlington. I was so excited to have this bike here. 
Because Burlington is like a great place to ride bikes, yeah. right? It's a really great place. There's the bike path. Mm -hmm. Biking to campus is super easy. Yep. All around a pretty bikeable city. So it definitely is really nice when you have a bike around. Totally, yeah. You know, taking it wherever you want to go. Yeah. And I mean, I took this bike wherever I wanted to go. And I ended, I even took it to the UVM bike house, if you guys have been there. And they marveled at this bike because it's like supposedly vintage 80, 40 oh, years no. old. Oh, yeah, Such wow. a great bike, uh, like a hybrid road and mountain bike. Did something happen to this bike that you're oh, talking boy, about? Oh boy, did something happen. Um, what do you guys think is like a crazy crisis going on here in Burlington with bikes? Yeah, it's a great question. Well, a lot of bikes have been breaking. Yep. Yeah. But I don't think that's what happened to your it's bike. It's not what happened. Did it get stolen? It got stolen. <gasps> oh no. So my dad's oh, bike, God. 40 years old, is long gone. And I don't know where it is. Maybe it was sold for parts. Yeah. But it brings about like a really serious issue, don't you guys think? I totally agree. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, bike theft is a big issue in Burlington. So yeah. our PSA is going to focus on how to not get your bike stolen. Right. Um, because a lot of college students have bikes and then a lot of their bikes get taken from them. So that's what we're going to discuss in our PSA. Right. And just pretty much how to protect your bike, lock your bike, how to prevent that how to prevent your dad's tears, essentially. Yeah. Because he cried I, so much. I have my dad's bike, actually. It's oh, also really? a Cannondale, but it hasn't oh, been it? stolen yet, so we'll oh. see. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. To me. And you know what? Maybe with this PSA, there, the chances of it getting stolen will be reduced. Will go down. Yeah. Yeah. Almost to that. zero. I could see that happening. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. So pretty much um, that's what our PSA is about. Uh, protect your bike. And love your bike. Lock your bike. Don't forget to lock your bikes. So we all live together. And um, someone doesn't do their dishes. It only takes a few minutes to do dishes. Like just do your goddamn dishes. Obviously it's not one of us. It's our roommate. It's our roommate, yeah. And it's not just the dishes, it's the hair in the shower that really gets me. But the dishes just puts it over the edge. The overflowing garbage. Took After the words we made out of my mouth. so much time to create a chore list. It's crazy. Crazy. Mm -hmm. But the dishes. It's the dishes. It's the dishes. Just do your goddamn dishes. So I've been living with the girls for about four months now. And honestly, I just don't think they understand me. And I've been having like a lot going on. Um, and honestly, it's like really rude because anytime I'm trying to do something, it's like it's always I'm the problem. <sighs> They're honestly so messy. And it just gets to me sometimes and I have, I come back from a long day at school and I just don't have the time to do my dishes and they always need to get on me about something. But honestly, I think they're the problem. Hey, Matt. Hey, Avery. You see those people working behind the camera right now? How much do you think they're getting paid? Definitely enough to, you know, provide a livable, livable wage and eat food and pay for their housing and maybe even have some leisure activity. What does that mean? <laughs> what do you think, Matt? Yeah, I would say I would agree. Probably enough to like, you know, have a decent place to live, get nutritious food, maybe go yeah. on like a vacation once a year. Yeah, unfortunately they're getting paid nothing. <laughs> Crazy. Nothing. And they're putting in all this labor to make us look good. And what do we get? And what do they get out of it? Probably poor student housing. Um, our PSA is going to be about exploitative wage labor in a capitalist system and how other animals in the animal kingdom don't have to work for food, for affordable housing, for the bare necessities, but humans are the only animal that does. What's wrong with us? <laughs> that is the question. So just like imagine being like a little bumblebee flying through a field, flowers everywhere. All you gotta do is just enjoy the taste of that sweet nectar and you're living your best life. But no, not us. Yeah, who do you think has more leisure time? Clara behind the camera or a hunter-gatherer? Uh, a hunter-gatherer. Uh, hunter-gatherer. Yep. Or a bear. Or a bear. A dolphin? Bears Dolphins get to sleep. Can paint. Have you seen them paint before? They got all that time. You see me painting? I don't think so. What are hobbies? I don't remember. No. 
Not today. <laughs> um, all right, so that wraps <laughs> up our segment uh, today. Thank you. Mm. <laughs>